Hello there, I'm Sandy Alnock, Bible journaler and artist here on YouTube, and today I'm going to do another In My World Watercolor Month series. July 2018 is World Watercolor Month, so I'm going to be celebrating with lots of watercolor in my Bible. I hope you've tried some. Last week's was a lot of fun, and this week's will be too. Psalm 119, how sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. And often we think of doing honey because the word honey is in the verse. And I've done that myself, but I thought this time I wanted to do something a little bit different. And I had kind of a whimsical idea that I wanted to try. So instead of going for the honey, I'm going for the sweet. And so something that's a favorite of mine in this summer season is sweet fruits. And I tend to eat a lot more citrus in the summer. So I'm going to put an orange slice in here. You could do all different kinds of fruits and come up with the pun that I'm going to be using in just a few minutes here. But I'm going to show you how I make the orange. I'm using a couple rolls of tape. <laughs> I know. Isn't that ridiculous that you can just use a roll of tape? We all buy these fancy dyes and everything, and we're all excited to have all these big things. Circles, you can use a bowl from the kitchen. You can use a glass from the cupboard. Lots of things to make some concentric circles. So you want one for the insides of the slices and then I'm putting two on the outside edges so I can have that outer ring of orange. And then for the slices themselves I did some research to find out how many slices are in an orange and there are a bunch of different kinds so make however many you want. Nobody's gonna care. So I just did a vertical and horizontal you know cut a little mark and then the angles the crisscross and kept those simple so that I didn't have to measure everything out. I didn't even use a ruler because this is going to be a, a really simple technique that I hope you'll find a lot of fun. So I mixed up an orange using a yellow and a red. And I got that orange just the way I wanted it. If you have an orange already in your paint set, you can just use that. I'm dipping my brush into the water and then kind of shaking off the excess so I don't have a ton of water I'm putting down. And that gives me a dark to light kind of transition. And I'm not going to do that on the whole thing. I just wanted color in here and I wanted you to see if you're new to watercolor that that's how you make a color get lighter and darker. Use more pigment in one section and less pigment in another by putting more water down at that end. I'm going to speed up through the other slices here. But what you can see is that I am actually filling in in between those pencil lines. I'm not painting right over them because painting over them can trap them. On Bible paper, when we're doing something really transparent like this, we can sometimes still erase the pencil lines through the paint. But if you don't like that at all, then you can certainly do something like this by coloring inside those lines, and then that gives you the division between the orange slices anyway. And then I'll fill in that circle around the outside edge. And I'm not stressing over making everything perfect. I'm just making it good enough because it's going to read as an orange. It looks like an orange. And then add a little bit more pigment if I get lighter in some areas. After it's kind of dry, you can iron over top of it using just a piece of paper on top to flatten it out some. Now mine was still wet, so I picked up some of that color on that top piece of paper. I like how it did that, though. I like that it it sort of smooshed out the color there so it suddenly got lighter in one area and darker in another. I think that looks much more watercolory and more artistic. So I'm going to leave it, though you could go back and paint it again right on top of this if you want richer color. My pencil lines are all erased with that nice soft kneaded eraser and I'll add some more pencil lines and this is where my page gets punny because the idea behind this one I thought when I think of oranges and I think of, you know, those kind of citrus fruits, I think of Sunkist. And I decided to make S-O-N-K-I-S-T instead of S-U-N. In order to kind of convey that idea and not just be weird that way, I looked up their logo so I could make something that had sort of a nod to their logo. I'm not going to go for every letter form and make the S look like theirs and that sort of thing. I'm just going to use my own kind of handwriting for this. But theirs is on an angle, so I drew angled lines so that I could actually mimic that in some fashion. I didn't stress out about anything other than getting the letters in there so that I wouldn't run out of space. So when I did my pencil work, I didn't you know, draw 
the left and right side of every letter. You can do that if that's the way you love lettering. But I just wanted something that was going to generally reflect the Sunkiss logo and and just make it something kind of fun on my page. So I've mixed up a couple different blues to make my blue paint and then I'm going to go over them with my brush. Now this is a number eight silver brush from the silver brush company. It's but in their black velvet line and if you struggle with getting a, something that has a good point on it, this is a really good investment. For most Bible journalers, I would say a number eight round brush will do you for most of what you need to do for your Bible journaling. I also have a number 12 that I use a lot that you'll see me use for backgrounds and things, but you could even still do bigger things with a number eight because I don't want people to feel like you have to spend a fortune, but if you're having trouble with your brushes, uh, this does get a nice fine point to it. And it really helps when I'm trying to do hand lettered text in watercolor because that's kind of a challenge. But I'm feeling really good at this point because my letters are coming out fairly well. I haven't screwed anything up yet, but there is time. So I will show you in just a minute something that I screwed up. Uh, yeah, you know, there's nothing like having an oops that sent, sets you back and makes you realize, you know, I really didn't pay much attention to what I was doing, but that is still to come. So you have that to look forward to here in this video. I always love adding a little bit of my own handwriting in my Bible journaling. So here I'm adding sweet sun-kissed word of God. And I'm leaving room down below where I can write out a prayer about how sweet God's word is to me and personalize this page more that way. But look what I did. I blooped a couple of those places. I did my ironing before it was dry because I am impatient. So I was very blessed to know that the Sunkist logo also has a white outline around the outside edges of it. So guess what? I can take my white gel pen. I use a Uniball Signo white gel pen. Some other people haven't had luck with that one, so they use different white pens. And I can just go right over that. Nobody's going to know or care that I have a little bloopy there. So I'm just going to go over it and fix it with my white pen. And then highlight my verse by adding a little bit of color onto that. Now you could do a whole page full of these orange slices, which would be a beautiful background. And maybe there'll be something with orange slices going on over on Instagram, because I am doing daily little videos each day during World Watercolor Month. Just little things to practice and play and have fun with. These are the prompts that I am using and our Facebook group is using. If you'd like to join in, you can join in anytime. No worries about joining in late. You don't have to do anything on a timed basis whatsoever. You can do whatever you want. I'm just encouraging people to do some watercoloring. And I will see you again next week. Have a wonderful and blessed week. God bless you. Bye-bye.